Hey, what is up guys? I'm KPHD here, and this year wrapped up the sixth annual Google I.O. 2013 conference in San Francisco, California. There were a lot of awesome things that happened and also a lot of memorable things that didn't happen that we expected to happen. But if you don't wanna watch the three hour long keynote, which I'll include below the like button, and if you don't wanna watch the dozens of other hours of sessions, this video, while it might be a little bit long, is a condensed version of that. And without any further ado, we're gonna go ahead and give you the top 10 announcements from Google I.O. 2013. All right, so kicking it off at number 10 was Android Studio. Now this is a developer conference, so we gotta respect that there are a lot of developers there, and one of the things they showed off called Android Studio was a really impressive sort of console looking thing that allows developers to better manage rendering the size of their applications for basically different screen sizes and different layouts in order to abide by Android's design guidelines. And it actually looked like a pretty cool thing that'll help us see a lot more quality apps in the Play Store. Number nine is notification sync across devices. So maybe you have the same app installed on more than one device. They'll now be able to take advantage of this API. I swipe to dismiss an application in maybe an app called WhatsApp on my tablet and my phone will no longer display that notification either. So if I have a whole conversation in some messaging app on one device and I pick up the other one, I don't want that notification anymore. So now that's built in. Number eight is improvements to Google Chrome. A lot of people don't know, not only is Android the most popular mobile platform, but Chrome is the most popular browser period. So a lot of improvements went into Chrome on both the desktop and mobile. And the coolest thing about that, what they showed was a demo of this racing game that spanned across multiple devices. So they connected all the devices together, both iOS and Android devices alike, and each device had a player, and you touch your screen to control your race car across everyone else's device, which is really cool. The video moved from device to device, the sound of your race car moved from device to device. It was really cool, and it was all going through Google Chrome, something that people are probably never going to use, but definitely an awesome demo-worthy feature anyway. Number seven is the Google Play Music Service. It's now called Google Play Music All Access, which is a bit of a mouthful, but I'll just keep calling it Google Music for now. But it's a subscription music service, so this puts Spotify on watch. For $9.99 a month, you get unlimited access to all the songs in Google Play, and including the ones you already uploaded, of course. And if you sign up before June 30th, you actually get it for $7.99 a month, and you get a free 30-day trial. The service itself looks to be pretty awesome, and it might still be US only, which is really unfortunate because Google has a habit of not making their services internationally available. But nevertheless, it's pretty cool, and the app itself is also really, really good. I've been using the app for the past couple of days, and I'm going on a trip very soon while I'll be using the app on an airplane, so I'm making some playlists and everything like that. But it's very smooth, very fluid. It allows you the ability to create a radio station based off of a specific song or playlist and it just creates an endless playlist of songs for you and you can control the order of the queue and everything but you know endless music discovery that's really what it should be all about so Spotify like I said is on notice because Google Play Music All Access has arrived. Number six is the new Google Plus. Now a lot of people say no one uses Google Plus and that's fine if you think that but Google Plus whether you like it or not is becoming a huge part of tying all the different services that Google has together so your account whether you post things or share things or not is pretty critical. And it's gotten a whole UI refresh, a whole redesign, a very neat multiple column cards layout on the desktops. So now you won't really be able to say, you know, it looks different on the desktop from the phone, from the tablet. Now they all look the same in that multiple column UI. And it also looks really good. You get that hollow font, you get uh, some nice animations, you get some smooth scrolling, you get a whole bunch of different smart features where if you automatically upload an album of photos as you go around on vacation, it automatically uploads them all in full resolution and you get to automatically enhance them and tag your friends' faces in them and it'll combine things together and make panoramas when it notices you have certain pictures and it'll automatically take the best photos that are in focus and when people are smiling and the sharpest, best contrast ones. It's very, very smart with your photos photos and gives you a basic highlight reel of all the best photos you took. So maybe you took 600 photos on one trip, it'll give you a highlight reel of the best 50 of them based on what it thinks were awesome. So that's pretty cool and like I said, there are some neat automatic features like automatic hashtags. So if you take a picture of say the Eiffel Tower, it'll automatically add the hashtag Eiffel Tower to your post so you can discover more posts that have that same thing in them. 
So if you visit some cool landmarks, you'll be able to see stuff like that. Very cool stuff. Google Plus has some awesome behind the scenes improvements using Google's knowledge graph, of course. Number five is Google Play Games. Google Play Gaming is brand new. It's basically really gaming focused in the Play Store and it uses app data sync across devices to make it happen. Now the live demo on stage didn't really work so well, but basically this app data sync will allow you to have the same data inside every application across devices. Perfect example, let's say I have Angry Birds on my tablet and on my phone. I get to level 30 of Angry Birds on my phone and I wanna put it down and move over to the tablet. I install it on my tablet and I'm already on level 31. That's how it works. You basically get the same achievements and the same unlock. Everything you had on one app on one device will move to that same app on a different device. There are also achievements and leaderboards among your Google Plus friends, and there's also multiplayer. So what's really cool is you could have three different people running you know, an iPhone, an iPad, and a Nexus 10, and they could all race against each other and like nudge the person who's playing their iPad by nudging their car on your screen, and they'll be able to see you nudge their car on their iPad. It's really cool. The multiplayer gaming looks very, very neat, and there's a lot of games that are gonna support that. Uh, in the coming months, so that's really neat. So Google Play Games, number five, pretty solid up, uh, upgrade. I like where this is going. Uh, even though I'm not a big gamer on mobile, I'll probably be gaming more because of this service. Number four, Hangouts. It's a multi-platform messaging service. You'll get it on the web, you'll get it in iOS, you'll get it in Android. It's almost everywhere. And now this was a, a very confusing announcement because at first we didn't know if it was replacing certain things or if it was just being added to the list of messaging services Google has. But basically over the next couple months, it'll be slowly eating up and bringing into itself other Google messaging services. So right now, the Android app will just replace Google Talk. And once you get it working, it'll basically start the ability to have multi-person comment threads and just hang out with people uh, with text and with video and emojis and all sorts of crazy stuff. And the app is very fast, it's very fluid. I've been using it on Android and it's really useful. Um, right now there is no SMS support, but we've seen a, a variety of opinions on whether or not this will actually happen. I really hope it does because if it does, iMessage is in big trouble. But the bottom line is Hangouts is now a thing. I had an, a separate explain video on Google Babel explained. Google Babel was its code name when it was being developed by Google. So now that it's a real thing, you can check out that video and basically get the gist of everything about Google's Hangouts app. Number three is Google Now improvements. Now Google Now is one of the biggest selling points of Android. It's one of the most awesome things in the Play Store. Now it's on iOS and now it's also in Chrome. And a lot of the improvements were, first of all, you get some new neat cards where you can have reminders and certain voice commands and things work a lot better and some additional features. But also in Chrome, it got really neat. So basically once the Google Now experience comes to Chrome, you'll be able to just go to google.com and say, okay, Google, how tall is Barack Obama? And it'll give you the same response that it would in Google Now for Android. So they did a bunch of neat demos and basically it's now more contextually aware. So you can have almost a very conversation-like thing with it. So for example, I could say, how much does it cost to ride this roller coaster in this park? And it will tell me that. And then I can say, how long will it take to get there from here? And you didn't have to name it again. When you say there and here, it knows you're talking about the roller coaster in the amusement park. And when you say here, it knows you're talking about your current location. So it can tell you this information without you repeating yourself over and over again. Very cool stuff. Google Now improvements are definitely gonna be a big help. Number two, the Samsung Galaxy S4 with Android 4.2 Pure Jelly Bean on it. This one caught us totally by surprise. It's basically a Super Nexus. I did a separate video on that not too long ago, so if you haven't already seen it, definitely click the annotation there, or if you can't, there's a link below that like button. But basically, now there is a Galaxy S4 out there in the Play Store, it'll be available soon with the Pure Nexus experience on it, straight from Google. Well, I didn't know that Samsung had any reason to do this. I didn't know that Google had any reason to do this, but now it is officially a thing. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be delivered uh, through the Play Store. You'll be able to get this unlocked with an unlocked bootloader with the same bands as the Nexus 4 on AT&T and T-Mobile. And you also have uh, LTE support, which solves a lot of the complaints that were about the Nexus 4. You also get a micro SD card slot, a removable battery. It's basically a really, really great Nexus experience uh, in that Galaxy S4. And number one at Google I.O. 2013 was the new Google Maps experience. This, I felt, was one of the most overarching, awesome improvements of anything we saw at Google I.O. I think it was one of the most underrated things. A lot of people might be talking about Google Maps as if it's, it's pretty neat, but it's not all of that. 
but it's awesome. Google Maps had a huge amount of improvements this year. First of all, that new design that came to the iOS app that a lot of us Android users were wondering why we didn't get, now we're going to be getting that. So there's going to be an update for Google Maps for Android. And there's also a new Google Maps for desktop. So when you visit it on the web and you go to Google Chrome or whatever browser you use and open up Google Maps, it's going to be nuts. The experience in Google Maps is totally overhauled. The search interface is now changed. So it gets better travel instructions, better, more intuitive clicking for locations and everything like that. You get a much faster experience. So zooming in and out and navigating streets, it's all very, very smart. So if you click on a new location, it'll start to highlight the streets between your location and that new location. It's really, really smart. Also, click on locations will give you built-in card UI, so you'll get Google offers built in. And it's also basically merged in with Google Earth. So if you keep zooming all the way in, you'll get to Google Street View, and you'll be able to just look at buildings in Google Street View. Zoom slowly out, you'll get to an overhead view and satellite view, and you can keep zooming out. And at the demo, they zoomed all the way out and zoomed out to the full Earth floating around the solar system and they pointed out that the clouds were actually being rendered in real time in that earth, which was really awesome, very impressive. They even kept zooming out and showed the earth in a relative position to the moon and the sun and the stars in the sky. Awesome stuff, definitely very cool. So the whole Google Maps experience is totally revamped. There's even a new tablet app and tablet experience. There's an explore button so you can explore new places based on reviews. There's a new review system, which is out of 5.0 stars integrated with Google Plus and Zagat. There's a ton, a ton of Google Plus improvements. And that's, I think, easily one of the most underrated and awesome things that happened at Google Plus, Google I.O. So yeah, there you go. A lot of stuff happened at Google I.O. 2013, and I'm sure a lot more will be unveiled over the coming days, weeks, and months. A lot of the things people were asking were, wait a second, usually at Google I.O. we see a new version of Android. That didn't happen, and I'm also expecting that we will see Android 4.3 or maybe even 4.2.3 Jelly Bean in the coming months. Number two, where's the next Nexus 7? I also think we're going to see that soon in the next coming months. Perhaps later in the summer, uh, we're going to see a 1080p Nexus 7, an updated version of that. Um, and there are a lot of other questions about things that also happened during the event, and I'll include as much information as I can in the description below. So that's gonna be a gold mine of links and quotes, basically. Uh, but yeah, a lot of great stuff happened definitely this year. And I'm looking forward to the next couple of months and seeing the way things pan out because not everything is fully baked yet. Like I said, Google Hangouts could really use SMS support and a couple of other things could really use some fine tuning and tweaking. Uh, but other than that, yeah, that's it. Top 10 things from Google I.O. 2013. The entire day one keynote began with a whole spiel about how successful Google's been and how much they're working with developers to include them in further projects and stuff like Google Glass and stuff and how there's been 900 million Android activations. But I think the best part of Google I.O. was the last part of the day one keynote where Google's Larry Page came out on stage and gave basically a speech about how the future looks for Google, for himself, for what he thinks of the tech industry. And uh, it was very fitting. He kind of gave that speech in front of the floating Google Earth in the background. So he was kind of talking about how he feels about the whole world as the globe spun behind him. It was very cool. Uh, and the whole speech was really, really great. So if you do have a chance to watch what he says during that speech before his Q&A, which is also very unique, there's a link below to that. The whole keynote is on YouTube and you can check out that as well. So either way, that's been it. That's been Google iOS 2013 wrap up slash highlights slash summary video. Definitely feel free to give a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I will talk to you guys in the very next video. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.